Hi, I'm Michael Sinell with Tux Digital, and in this video we're going to take a look at the various different application launching widgets available in the Plasma 5 desktop, as well as take a look at how to manage your applications with KDE Menu Edit. Here's the breakdown list of what we're going to address in this video. I'm a pretty big fan of KDE. I think Plasma, KWIN, Console, Conversation, and so many more are just fantastic. However, they do make some weird decisions at times, like setting the default labels of applications in the main menu as a description instead of the name of the app. So step one, fix KDE's bad defaults. Step two, we're going to check out the various widgets and options available for launching applications. In step three, we're going to take a look at KDE Menu Edit in an app overview. Step four, we're going to edit an existing item to demonstrate how you can easily improve the display and usability of your menu items. Finally, in step five, we're going to create a new item for the first person shooter, Xenotic. Xenotic comes as a bundled archive so they can provide one download for multiple platforms. This is a really cool approach for simplicity, but it also means that in most distros, it won't utilize your package manager. I'm not trying to bash KDE or anything because a lot of their defaults are good and make sense. It's just a few here and there that boggles my mind as to why they did it. These bad defaults don't ruin anything and they don't make KDE Plasma any less of an awesome desktop, but they do make it feel a little unpolished. The first of three defaults we're going to fix is swapping item labels to display application names instead of descriptions as primary. In my opinion, this is a bad default because most people know what they want to use based on the name of the application. For example, if you're going to go into the uh, internet category and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that all browsers by default are labeled web browser, resulting in using the small text underneath or the icon next to the entry as a way to differentiate the items. If the labels were using the application name, then it would also use a sort by name, so users would go to the F section of the menu in order to launch Firefox. The solution to this is very easy to do. Right click the application launcher icon and choose the application launcher settings. In the settings window, check the checkbox for show applications by name and click OK. Clicking on the application launcher now, you'll see that all applications are organized by their name. So if you go into the internet category, uh, Firefox as well as the rest of the applications are now sorted correctly. The next default to fix is the default shortcut for application launcher. From Alt F1 to something more practical. Even long term users of Plasma may not be aware that this menu has a default shortcut because it is such an odd shortcut. I can almost guarantee no one would stumble on it. I found this shortcut because I purposefully went to give it a good shortcut and unexpectedly found it already had one and it was a bad one. The solution to this is also very easy to do. We're going to reopen the application launcher settings and go to the keyboard sor shortcut section. Next just click on the existing shortcut of Alt F1 and replace it with whatever shortcut you prefer. I'd suggest logo space. Then click OK. The logo key is also known as the super key, meta key, or the windows key. I prefer to call it the logo key though because on my keyboard it's not a windows logo. The final default to fix is not a usability problem. Instead, it's something I, as well as every Plasma user I've asked, find annoying. It's that irritating, bouncing icon of an application that follows your mouse around when you open something. That feature is called Launch Feedback. One of the first things I do in Plasma is turn off what I like to refer to as the Jack Russell Terrier icons. To disable Launch Feedback, open System Settings and go to the Application section. On the left sidebar, choose Launch Feedback. Now to turn it off, just select No Busy Cursor. But if, if you like, feel free to check out the other options if you still want something to show. Now let's take a look at the various methods of launching applications in KDE Plasma. There are five different methods of application launching available built into Plasma, three of which being main menu widgets and two alternative quick launch methods. First up is the Application Launcher, which is the default menu option available in KDE Plasma. We've already looked at this a bit, so we're going to address this method quickly. 
When you open the launcher, the first panel presented to you is the favorites panel. You can right click any application in the, in the application section to add it to your favorites. Next is the application panel. It's fairly straightforward uh, with a category structure of all the applications installed in the system, including uh, subcategory. The computer panel is quick shortcuts to various system related actions. The history panel displays the last few applications that you launched as well as the most recently accessed files and documents. Finally, the leave panel is where you go to log out, restart, and shut down your computer. To be blunt, I think this is the worst of all the available options. It's cumbersome, it has unnecessary steps to perform actions, the search box is fairly hidden until you start typing. But with that said, it does look pretty good and might be nice for people coming from Windows. The next application launching widget is the application menu. To activate this menu, right click the icon for the main menu and choose alternatives. Select the application menu and click the switch button. In my opinion, this is the most streamlined yet most powerful option available for launching applications. You get everything in one compact panel without it feeling cramped. On the left sidebar, the top portion is your favorite applications, and the bottom portion is the session actions like shutdown and restart. On the right side is the combination of history at the top, followed by the applications keeping a category structure, including the subcategories, and then a clean yet obvious search box for type launching. If you're looking for a menu option that provides a great combination of usability and simplicity, I think this is a great option. The final application launching widget is something quite different. It's called the application dashboard. Right click the main menu icon, choose alternatives, select application dashboard, and click the switch button. I think this is a pretty cool launcher menu. It looks great. It has easy access to all the various panels simultaneously. Oh, and did I mention it looks freaking cool? The only gripe I have with the with this menu is that the search functionality is hidden away again with just text. It seems like the KDE design group aren't big fans of obvious search indicators. I know you don't have to click in any box to search. You could just start typing at any time. But search boxes are more than just functionality. They are also a good way to indicate to users that it's possible. The text to indicate that you can search is fairly large, but the size of the and the location of it makes it seem more like a dashboard title at first. All I'm saying is, a simple search box goes a long way for usability. This next method is a hidden gem in Plasma, the desktop mouse action app menu. This method allows you to quick, uh, click anywhere on your desktop to pull up an application menu for quickly scanning through your installed applications. If you've ever used OpenBox, then this may feel familiar to you, as this menu is very similar in usage. But you have more control in KDE's menu. But the best difference is you don't have to manually add applications to the menu like you do in OpenBox. Before I show you how to enable this, I wanted to take a moment for a quick tangent. I prefer to use the middle mouse button, the one when you click down the scroll wheel, for this menu variant. However, by default, KDE has decided that that should be dedicated to pasting content of your clipboard into sticky note widgets on your desktop. I, I do not see the point in this. I, I don't understand. It's, it's just for quick notes, okay, sure, but the same thing could be done in Kate. And then they could be saved for searching for later. Maybe it's just me. If so, Please let me know in the comments below why this works better for you than just using Kate. Let's enable the desktop mouse action menu now. By right clicking on the desktop, choose desktop settings. You may see something else depending on your distro's default. For example, it might say folder settings. In this settings menu, choose the mouse actions on the left sidebar. From here, change the value of the middle button from paste to application launcher click apply. That's it. 
But since we're here, how about one more tangent? If you go to the tweaks section, you'll see this option for show desktop toolbox. If you're not aware of what that is, the desktop toolbox is this little menu right here. If you don't like this menu, like a lot of people have complained before in the past, you can come in here and just uncheck it, click apply, and it's gone. And of course if you want it back at some point, you can go back in here and do that again. Before we move on, I want to address a bug I found with this menu. You'll notice that the labels are using the descriptions instead of the application names. And at the time of this recording, there isn't a way to configure it. I submitted a bug report for this issue, but it's kind of interesting because the bug is pretty new. In fact, the menu worked just fine in Plasma 4. The next and final variant of application launching available by default in KDE Plasma is KRunner. This is my preferred method of doing a lot of actions on my Plasma setup. KRunner is a quick launcher similar to Synapse, Cupfer, Gnome Do, and others. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because there are way too many things to address in this in this feature that it really deserves its own video. If you watch my previous video on Ubuntu Mate's interface switcher, you'll know that I plan to create a specific video explaining all the cool stuff for Synapse. And I think I might do the same thing for KRunner as well. The first thing to demonstrate is that KRunner is a great way to launch applications. Activate it by pressing Alt Space on your keyboard and type in a portion of the application you'd like to launch. I prefer to change this shortcut actually from Alt Space to Control Space instead since I use Alt Space for something else and Control Space is the standard for all other launchers. But if you're fine with it, then feel free to ignore the previous sentence. Next let's run some calculations. We could use a calculator app or we could just use KRunner. The final example I'll show is Session Management Actions. Activate KRunner and type in shutdown. Or restart. Or suspend. And so on. The benefits of KRunner don't end there, of course. There's a plugin system for KRunner that has a lot of great features, as well as the ability to add more. Before we close on KRunner, I wanted to address one more thing. KRunner, as well as other launchers like Synapse, Learn your preferences, so if you type in CH, for example, and select Google Chrome from the list of options a couple of times, you can then train these launchers to place Google Chrome as the first option when you type in CH. So the more and more you use a launcher, like KRunner, the better and better they become. KDE Menu Edit is a really great tool for editing applications in the Plasma desktop. You can rename an app, change the icons, change category placement, and much more. I think this app is very much an unsung hero to the Plasma desktop because it takes something that typically requires editing .desktop files in a text editor and gives it a nice simple GUI that's built into the Plasma desktop. To open KDE Menu Edit, right click on the main menu icon and choose Edit Applications. We're not going to go through absolutely everything about this application because the video is pretty long already and there's a lot it can do. So we're going to address the key portions of the application and show why I really like it. On the left side of the app is the category and app list. And on the right side is the edit form. I like this layout because it makes it really quick and easy to navigate and edit entries. For this walkthrough, we're going to use LibreOffice Writer. So the name and descriptions are fairly obvious, but you may be wondering what the difference between description and comment is. The answer to that question is not really anything, except that typically the descriptions are much shorter than in comments. There is something to note though. If an application has a comment but doesn't have a description, then the comment will take the place of the description and display where applicable. So if an app didn't have a short description, but the main menu widget was set to show descriptions as the label, then the long comment would be displayed instead. To the right of the name and descriptions is the place where you change your icon, and command is what is used to launch the applications. Next are the checkbox options. Launch feedback is where you can disable the Jack Russell Terrier icons via individual applications. I would elect to just disable it entirely, but that's up to you. Show in system tray allows you to place an icon of any application in your system tray. Show only in KDE checkbox allows 
you to display an entry in KDE launchers, but hide it from other desktop environments, if you want to. But wait, there's more! If you act now, you can also get a free gift of hidden entries! This additional option allows you to edit the entries in the KDE menu edit, but keep them from actually showing up in the application launchers, like menu, KRunner, dashboard, etc. WorkPath is the location where the application is associated while running. This means you can make it automatically save files and cache and other things in specific locations rather than the defaults. Run in Terminal is obviously going to run an application in the terminal window, which is necessary for terminal dependent applications, but could also be pretty nice for, to easily see the terminal output of an app to debug something. Running as a different user is pretty cool because it lets you run an application as another user without switching users. Which means that if you'd like to run an application with elevated privileges, you can set that user as root and launch it as root. And finally, the shortcut key allows you to assign a keyboard shortcut to a specific application. Now it's time to edit an application. And in this example, I'm going to change something that bothers me regarding the Firefox entry. You'll notice that the Firefox entry says, Firefox Web Browser. Web Browser, browse the World Wide Web. The redundancy of this entry bothers me. So I'm just going to remove the Web Browser portion of the name and click Save. Be sure to remember to click Save before closing the application, otherwise your changes won't be applied. As I said in the breakdown, Zenonic comes bundled as a single archive to be ran on various platforms, so we're going to create our own entry for it since it won't be handled by the package manager. The first thing we need to do is download and extract the archive from Zenonic.org. To extract the archive, just navigate to the folder where it is located and right click the zip file in Dolphin and choose Extract Archive Here Auto Detect Subfolder. I decided to create a games folder in my home directory to put Zenotic in, but it could be really stored anywhere you want it to be. Let's go into the folder and see what we have here. So there are a lot of files in here, some of which aren't important to us like these exe files, but there are a couple that, of options in here that we need to check out, like the glx files and the sdl files. glx stands for OpenGL Extension for Xorg, and sdl stands for Simple Direct Media Later. It depends on your hardware which version you should use, whether that be 32-bit or 64-bit versions, and you may have a varied experience for whether GLX or SDL versions work best for you. I think the SDL is the better option, so I'd suggest that you try that first. So let's go back to KDE Menu Edit and create a new entry for Zenotic. First click on the Games category and click the New Item button. We're going to type in the name of the game and click OK or enter. We can skip most of the fields for this item since we're making it for ourselves and only address the icon and the command. The icon selector has the ability to search your existing icon set to see if it has a matching icon for it or not. And if it does, great, but if not, like in this case, we can choose to use a custom icon. So I'm going to click other and then browse and then we're going to go to the Zenotic folder. going to choose the right one we want. <laughs> As Zenotic provides icon files inside the bundle for this particular purpose. There are many options to choose from, but since it's an S there's an SVG, we're going to use this one. Because SVGs are created with code instead of pixels, which means they can resize to any size without losing clarity. Next, to choose the command, click on the Browse button next to the field and navigate to the Zenotic folder. In the folder you'll see glx.sh and sdl.sh files, as well as the regular glx and sdl files. If you're launching the game directly within Dolphin, you'd use the non-sh files. But for the KDE menu entry, we need to choose a .sh file. I'm going to choose sdl.sh. And that's it. Oh, wait, like I said, remember, click save. Now we're done. Time for some first-person shooting. Okay, hold on a second. I got a little ahead of myself. Before I do some gaming, I wanted to thank you for watching this video. And if you found this useful, please click the like button. 
And if you're interested in getting more content from me, be sure to subscribe. My name is Michael Tunnell with Tux Digital, and as always, keep using, learning, and enjoying Linux. Oh, and hey, if you want to play some Xenotic with me, just leave a comment below and we'll figure it out.